my name is Sebastian König and I'm very happy to announce a new CMI VVX tutorial series, the Massive Mammoth Masterclass. Some of you might remember the Mammoth modeling series and in this first series I've been covering modeling, sculpting, unwrapping, texturing and shading, but all that with the old version of Blender 2.49. And a lot has changed since then. I think it's time to finally bring the mammoth to life. Well, this resurrection will happen in a series of tutorials recorded by some of the most talented and famous Blender artists around. And we are extremely proud to be able to tell you that the first part of the new Massive Mammoth Masterclass will be covered by the awesome Nathan Beckdahl, who will teach you how to rig and weight this mammoth. Now for those of you who didn't watch the previous parts of the Mammoth series, I'd like to give you a little overview over the Mammoth and um, the whole model. Alright, so this is the Mammoth that we are going to resurrect. Now for those of you who still have the project files from the other tutorials, from the modeling and shading tutorials, you will find a few differences. For example, if you compare the normal map with the old map, then you will find this is new. In fact, I've redone all the textures, but the normal map has been rebaked because the normal space in Blender 2.47 has been kind of inverted compared to the old version, Blender 2.49. So here in the geometry, you would have to um, invert the normal space. So this would be minus one um, because otherwise uh, the normal map would point in the wrong direction. Okay, but for those of you who didn't watch these tutorials, uh, I want to give you a little overview over the model. So this is our mammoth on layer one. Then on layer two, we've got the tusks. On layer three, we have the eyes. And then here are some lamps that I've hidden. So that is the model. Go to edit mode. You can see it's pretty dense mesh. Um, but even though we do have a subsurf modifier and a displacement modifier to give it a little bit more shape because the uh, details or the muscles and stuff like that have been sculpted and the sculpting uh, has been baked to a displacement map and uh, that's why we do have the subsurf modifier here and underneath we have the displacement modifier and the displacement modifier is using a displacement texture and this displacement texture is using an OpenEXR image. And this image will, depending on the gray values, displace the surface. But of course we need the details or the geometry on the surface, so let's increase the subdivisions here so that the displacement modifier has some more vertices to work with. Okay, so on level 3 it's looking pretty good, but if you look here you can see that now we are almost half a million vertices and that will take a while to render. And um, because we have some fur over the skin, we will not really see all these details. So I think we can just decrease that again to 1 or 2, but um, if you still want to have these details, I mean there were not so many details, but if you want to have them, you can just go ahead and use a normal map for that. So here in the material, we're using this normal map. And maybe let's go to GLSL viewport shading so that we can see the effect of that. All right, so that is our shaded mammoth. And if I disable all these, you will see the effect of the normal map. Maybe it's a bit too bright, so I temporarily turn down the diffuse intensity. Okay, so there we have still all the details. Even if we disable the subsurf and displacement, there's still the impression of these details and these muscles. So I would recommend to use both the displacement with the mid res subsurf modifier and the normal map. So let's re enable these and then set this back. And then on top of the subsurf and displacement modifier, you can see three particle systems and the settings for the particle systems are in the particle panels, of course. So we've got three different hair systems, one for the short and fuzzy hair, it's really short. Then we've got some, yeah, some mid-length hair and we've got some long hair. So I, I decided to use three different systems because that's that way it's easier to control the different types of hair that I want to have on this mammoth. 
Okay, so the settings are right here in the particle panel. So let's go here and have a look at the uh, fuzzy hair. So you can see it's using 300 or 300 times the amount of emission. So 300,000 particles and 10 are displayed. Or actually, currently there's the long hair. So let's switch that to the fuzzy hair. If you set this up to 300, you will see the actual amount of hair that is being used for rendering. So that's quite a bit. So that, <laughs> that will slow down the viewport, so let's set this back to 10. Okay, so then we have got the long hair, that is just 15 times the emissions, or 15,000. And um, it's using the roughness settings to get this curly and rough effect on the hair. And you can just play around with these settings. Um, endpoint roughness will rough out the, well, the endpoints, as the name says. And uh, uniform will just uh, general, um, yeah, roughness to the hair. All right. Uh, if you want to comp the hair, you go to particle mode and then choose which particle system you want to work on. And then just with your comp brush, you just comb the hair. Or if it's too long, you can also cut the hair like that. And it can be really tricky to get it look right, especially when it's moving. That can require quite a bit of tweaking, but uh, with the correct material settings, it will look quite decent. Okay, so let's go back to object mode and disable these particle systems for the preview. So the uh, material for them is a fur material. The most important thing for a hair material is the strength setting. So the root, which will be uh, on the skin, has to be a little bit thicker than the tip, but both have to be really, really thin. And this setting right here will make it really thin. And um, that's why you have to increase the anti-aliasing to 16 or at least 11. Otherwise, it wouldn't look good. You can also go ahead and uh, set this a little bit thicker, maybe to 0, 0.0. 5 on the root and 0 0.01 on the tip. But um, when you have a close-up of the mammoth, it would look more like a coconut. Okay, uh, it can be tricky to get it right. So, one of the most important things for particle hair is to use this gradient, this blend texture that is being mapped along the strand. So it's being transparent at the root, transparent at the tip. And we've got this color gradient here, it's darker at the root and brighter at the tip, and that will map along the strand and that will give you the appearance of more or less uh, of hair. Yeah, so that is the particle system. Um, ah, yeah, uh, the, these particle systems use um, vertex groups to uh, control where we've got fur and where we don't have fur. So when you go to weight paint mode, you can here see the vertex group the name of fur one. Of course, blue means no weight or no hair in this case. Of course, we don't want to have hair on the toenails and also inside of the mouth. Hair would be pretty weird there, so I just make it blue with the painting tools here. We've got different settings of the kink, that is for the long hair, that is using different settings. Um, yeah, so that is the vertex groups for the hair. It's not very uniform. You can even that out by grabbing your blur brush and then painting across that and that will blur between the blue and green areas in this case and that will make it a little bit more uniform. But I think a little bit of roughness is okay for this kind of mammoth. Yeah, and that's more or less it. So now it would be time to rig this mammoth and after that to animate it and put it into a scene. And I'm really excited that Nathan Vekdal has agreed to do the rigging tutorial and uh, when he has finished, somebody else will do the animation. But that will not yet be revealed. But it will be awesome. And now Nathan will take over and for me it's time to say have fun with this mammoth and goodbye. <laughs>